Today we're at the guest house in beautiful Silver Springs, Florida, and we're talking about how to deal with these guys. <laughs> Now, there are a few things that can do as much damage to your challenge course in a short period of time than aggressive woodpeckers. Throughout the world, there are roughly 300 species of these animals, and 22 of them reside right here in the United States. Now, woodpecker damage is not distributed uniformly across any given area. It's typically localized, and it relates to the species and the number of woodpeckers in a given area. You may have these animals and never have any problems, or you might have serious issues continually. And of course, the bigger the species, the more significant the damage. The pileated woodpecker is a serious threat to our poles. They can stand up to 16 inches tall and can drill a course full of big holes in just a matter of days. So today, we're going to talk about how to avoid damage through the use of deterrence and good planning. And then, we'll talk about a technique to repair damage that they leave behind once they've already made their mark. Now, one of the greatest tools you have at your disposal is knowledge. And at the outset, one of the most valuable pieces of information that you can have is knowing what species of woodpeckers you have in your area that are most likely to attack your poles. A great source for this information is your local utility company. Because if you have woodpeckers attacking your course poles, you can be fairly certain that the utility company does too and can probably tell you who the likely culprits are. Now this is helpful information because the species can help determine what deterrents will work best and be most effective. And of course, the very best time to have this knowledge in hand is before course damage occurs. I'm sure you're like, wow, that's deep. Thanks for dropping that pearl of wisdom on us there, Captain. The only reason I even know we have woodpeckers is because I walked out to my course and it's full of holes. Otherwise, I would not be watching this stupid video. <laughs> Fair enough. But regardless, if you have an existing course or are planning to build a course, it's really wise to ask around and find out if there are woodpeckers in your area that are a problem. Then you can apply these deterrents and either help keep damage from occurring to begin with or to help stop it once it's started. For our purposes today, we're going to consider four deterrents that can help stop damage or at least seriously curtail it. The deterrent that we aren't really going to consider today is the temptation to employ mitigation via high velocity lead delivery. <laughs> So as a general rule, woodpeckers are protected, so you have to have a permit to use lethal means of removal, and some species are outright endangered. So a killing spree really isn't the answer. Even if you could get a permit and didn't mind taking the lives of things who are just going about their daily lives, doing so probably wouldn't solve your problem long term. And the reason is because these creatures are fiercely territorial. So unless you plan on eliminating the entire population, removing just one probably wouldn't do much good. Because once that individual is gone, another will just move into this newly opened up territory and take it over as its own. So what deterrents can we use and what do we have at our disposal to help with this? Well, the the first line of defense is often wire mesh. It's often called hardware cloth and this galvanized metal mesh comes in various sizes and thicknesses and can be fairly effective at keeping woodpeckers at bay. The most common size is 19 gauge wire with a quarter inch mesh. You should be able to find this at any hardware or home improvement store. And you just wrap it around the pole in sections and fasten it with screws. Just make sure to overlap about an inch or two so there are no gaps because if the birds can get to the wood, they'll find it. As I mentioned, do your research about the species you're dealing with. Large birds like the pileated woodpecker are crazy and will literally hammer through the wire mesh to get to the wood underneath, like in this picture right here. So you may need to step up to a higher gauge of wire. That makes it a little harder to work with, but it should be more effective at deterring your burlier adversaries. The second deterrent is specifically designed paint that includes compounds that are unpleasant to the birds, but not actually harmful. There are several types and brands on the market, but the product that we like best and use most often is an all natural paint based on the science of essential oils and ions and doesn't involve any petroleum products. Now don't ask me how all that works. It makes my eyes glaze over just thinking about it, but the inventor loves to talk about it. So if you want to talk to him, let me know. Thirdly, decoys like an owl, hawk, snake, or large woodpecker have also been used to help discourage woodpeckers from hanging around. The woodpecker decoy tells the other birds, move along, this area is taken. Now when using decoys, try to get the ones that have some kind of movement to them if you can, which seems to extend the time between when you install them and when the birds start figuring out that this thing is not an actual threat. I've linked sources to decoys down below. Fourthly, hanging reflective items such as mirrors or CDs or specially designed reflective bird deterrents around your course 
also has shown some promise for whatever reason. Maybe the birds have self-image problems and don't like looking in the mirror, or maybe it's just the light. I mean, who likes a mirror beam in their eye, right? The greatest chance of success though, as I mentioned, seems to be through combining these components. Woodpeckers can be very tenacious and quite honest, very frustrating. But by treating your poles with deterrent paint, adding mesh over the top of that, posting a decoy or two, and then hanging some highly reflective moving objects around the course, you may well provide enough of a barrier, enough aggravation to coax your feathered nemesis to go expend his efforts somewhere else. But what if the damage has already been done? If the holes in my poles are already really big, am I stuck with the huge expense of having to replace them, or is there something that I can do to fix them? The great news is there are quite a few options on the market for repairing a pole that's been damaged by a woodpecker rather than having to replace the whole pole. The downside is that some of them are quite caustic and require special tools to apply. Now the product we prefer is an expanding foam that heats up to 300 degrees, hardens, and creates a structurally sound repair even for very large holes. And there you go problem solved. But one of the best parts about this product is that the manufacturer has done extensive proof testing and has engineering to support this product. So it can be used with confidence knowing that the integrity of your course's support poles haven't been compromised by the woodpecker damage after it's been repaired. But for additional information on this pole repair material and the deterrent paint that I mentioned, please check the link below. If you have questions about applying these woodpecker deterrents, affecting woodpecker damage repair, or any other challenge course related topic, please leave it in the comments and we'll get to them and answer them as quickly as we can. Now, if you found this to be helpful, hop on over to challengecoursepro-tips.com to sign up to be a Pro Tips Insider and you'll get access to new Pro Tips content as well as exclusive resources made just for our insiders. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'm Don Stock and I will see you next time.